Yo ho, I decided to buy a jar to store my origami cranes. But when I got home, something unexpected and kinda terrible happened. As I opened the jar to clean it and then placed the lid back on, the glass suddenly shattered. It wasn't just a small crack, the jar completely exploded in my hands. At first, I was tempted to bring the jar back to the store and ask for an exchange. But then, an idea struck me. Just because something is broken, doesn't mean it's useless. So, instead of giving up on the jar, I will try to repair it. Not restore it to what it once was, but transform it into something new. I carefully searched the floor for the broken glass pieces, curious to see if they were large enough to work with and if I could piece them back together like a puzzle. Now, broken glass can be extremely sharp, so I handled each shard with the utmost care and respect. Fortunately, the glass had broken relatively cleanly. There was only one tiny fragment I couldn't account for, with the rest being decent sized. Except, of course, for all the tiny splinters, which, you know, I just vacuumed up. After a bit of puzzling, the broken pieces seemed to fit together almost perfectly, resembling the missing shape. That gave me hope and a spark of excitement for what this jar could become. Now, I just needed something to glue the pieces back together. And here it is. Not exactly the ideal glue for this kind of job, but I think it should do the trick. I've never worked with broken glass like this before, so I'll have to figure out the best approach as I go. By the way, the idea of repairing broken pieces with care is beautifully reflected in the Japanese art of Kintsugi. It's actually a very beautiful philosophy. First of all, I don't want to throw away this jar if there's a way to fix it. By repairing it, I can honor the effort that went into its creation. Even though it wasn't handmade, it still required resources, craftsmanship and machinery to exist. Secondly, just because the jar may not be as stable as it once was, doesn't mean it can't serve its purpose. It can still hold my origami cranes, even if it's a little fragile. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, there's a profound meaning in repairing something that's been broken. In Kintsugi, it's believed that scars and imperfections don't diminish an object's value, they enhance it, adding complexity and beauty. This idea reflects something deeply human. When we break, we're not lost. We can piece ourselves back together. Like this jar, our scars will remain visible, but through them, we grow. As I worked on gluing the pieces, I had time to reflect on what it means to be broken. I think when we, as humans, break, whether through painful experiences or loss, we often feel incomplete, as if something vital is missing. Contrary to the saying that time heals all wounds, I believe time alone doesn't heal. If we don't consciously decide to grow, to learn and to rebuild ourselves, we sadly remain broken. The pain may fade, yes, some of it might even be forgotten, but the shards are still missing. Healing, I've realized, is an intentional process. It requires us to examine our broken perspectives, to focus on our wounds and to actively allow them to heal. It's complex, but when we heal, we don't just repair ourselves. I know it sounds weird, but we change the world around us. We act differently because we're no longer carrying the same pain and in turn our interactions with others shift. This ripple effect transforms how the world responds to us. Some might even say that healing is our greatest responsibility. To face our pain, to repair what's been broken and to emerge as something stronger, wiser and more whole. Like this jar, we may never be exactly as we were before, but perhaps that's the point. Now, as you can see, it's pretty obvious why Kintsugi is typically done with pottery rather than glass. The transparent nature of glass makes the repairs look, yeah, quite messy. On top of that, I wasn't able to fit the pieces back together perfectly. You can see the uneven edge at the top. It's not exactly flush. 
Now that everything is glued together, the next challenge is cleaning it up. Funny enough, cleaning turned out to take longer than the gluing. Because glass is transparent, it was hard to tell whether the smudges I was trying to clean were on the inside or the outside. I also handled the jar carefully, half expecting it to fall apart again at any moment. But finally, after tissues, a sponge and even my own fingernails, well, it would be weird if they weren't mine, I'm done. And now for the final test, putting the lid back on. Drum roll please. And no, there's no way I'm pressing it down as it is. So I'll take out the rubber seal first, which should let the lid slide on much more easily. Yep, there we go, much better. Now, back to the real reason I wanted this jar in the first place. Here's something interesting. This is a standard chewing gum wrapper from Japan. Nothing special at first sight. But if we look closely, you'll notice a little line printed on it. When I fold the paper to make a square, you can see that this line marks exactly where to cut the envelope, leaving you with a perfect square. And guess what, in origami the square is one of the most common starting shapes. Well this has to mean something, right? I think it does. The creators of this chewing gum wrapper designed it so it could double as origami paper, turning something that would normally be trash into something useful and creative. Not only that, but the paper is beautifully colored and folds very easily. Speaking of origami, have you heard of the Japanese legend about folding 1000 paper cranes? In Japan, the crane is no ordinary bird, it's a sacred creature, believed to be blessed by the gods and capable of living for a thousand years. According to the legend, if someone folds 1000 paper cranes, their deepest wish will come true. But it's no small feat, folding 1000 cranes requires time, patience and dedication a way of showing the sincerity of the wish. The cranes, though made of fragile paper, symbolize unbreakable faith. I wonder if 1000 cranes would fit into this jar. Ah, let's not leave this one crane all alone, let's give it some brothers and sisters. And there it is, my jar, once broken, now whole again. It's far from perfect, but maybe that's the beauty of it. Like the cranes that will fill it, this jar carries a story. Really, it's a story of transformation, of finding new purpose in what once was discarded. This is the point where I say thank you for watching and for coming along on this little journey with me. I hope this story in its own small way reminds you of the power of resilience, of seeing a beauty in imperfection and embracing the art of repair, both in the things we own and within ourselves. As we both know, your time is precious. And the fact that you chose to spend some of it here means so much to me. Thank you for watching, for sharing this moment and being a part of this journey. Until next time, take care and stay inspired.